Hey, my name is Joey. Uh, I'm a novice programmer. Uh, very interested in you know hacking, cracking, reversing, reverse engineering, uh, networking, all that kind of stuff. Um, as I said, I'm a novice. You know, uh, I'm using this YouTube channel as a way to kind of motivate myself to maybe uh, actually uh, stop being so lazy and actually learning and doing more with computers, programming, and what have you. And I will upload topics of interest regarding cracking, hacking, straight up programming. Uh, maybe uh, people can learn something or find it interesting. So my first video is going to be uh, a video on how to crack or, uh, or reverse uh, a copy protection scheme or um, you know how to break into like a login protection. Uh, very basic. Uh, most programs are gonna be a little, gonna be more challenging this, but I mean they all boil down to this kind of concept. We're gonna actually build the program we're gonna that we're gonna attack ourselves. Uh, we'll call it login.c, and I'll explain the C code as I go. So if you don't know any C, I'll explain it very basically. It's gonna only be like ten lines, very simple. First, we have headers. Uh, basically, just you don't need to really know. I mean, the base all this is is telling the compiler where to find function declarations for the standard library for a certain function we're going to actually use. And I'll explain that a little better here in a second. So we're going to declare a variable as an integer. We'll call it flag equals zero. Now again, most a lot of copy uh, right protection schemes actually boil down to setting flags. I mean, it's, it's very common, you know, in the real world. Uh, it's a little more involved than what we're going to do, but. I mean, at the end of the day, there's usually a flag set, yes, is the user registered, yes or no? Does the user have permission to log in, yes or no? And that boils down to a flag, which then boils down to a conditional test, which you'll see later in the assembly. So we're saying, we're saying a default flag, a variable here to zero. Um, that's going to hold basically whether the user has permission or not. We're going to declare as well a buffer. Basically what this is is a character array, which is going to hold... Uh, the password from our user. We're going to use fgets. Uh, so what this is is uh, file get string um, into the buffer, no bigger than this size, which is 32 bytes, and we're going to read it from standard input. STDIN is standard input, which will translate to your keyboard. Um, let me first actually put a little bit of a prompt, just so we know what we're doing. So puts puts is actually put string. What it'll do is it'll output this to your terminal, say password. Then the program will ask you for your password with fgets. Fgets will prompt you, you know, and you'll basically enter your password, which will get stored in the buffer. Then we'll do a comparison. So we'll go um, if not string compare buff. Uh, let's call it power. So basically what this does is string compare as it sounds, strc and b string compare, it will compare two strings. So we're putting a constant string power that we're going to compare to what we uh, read into our buffer from the standard input. So basically what the user inputs. If they're equal, <coughs> string compare will return zero. Now once that zero is returned, then we can go to here and we're saying if not, so zero is, it's a boolean expression, so zero is a not. So if you go if not, so if it's a zero, we're going to increase the flag. Anything other than a zero, so if the strings didn't match, for instance, if the string is longer or shorter, it'll be a, it'll return um, a positive or negative number, so it won't return zero. So the not test will fail, and we won't increase the flag. So the only way we get this flag is if string compare returns zero. And the only way string compare returns zero is if buff contains the word power. Exactly as is, so all lowercase. Low now the actual check, so if flag, so what we're doing there is if flag, basically it's another boolean kind of test, uh, it's basically saying if flag, so if, if any other than zero, uh, I could also do something like this, if not flag would mean if flag is if flag is zero, uh, let me make it a little more readable, I guess, especially guys who need to see, uh, so if flag is greater than zero, so it's a little more readable, so now as you can see it's much more, you know, it's English kind of, if flag, greater than zero. So our flag starts at zero, 
but then if we password is correct, we increase the flag by one. So it's gonna be greater than zero. So we get to here if flag greater than zero, we know that they're actually authorized. So we'll tell them they're authorized. Otherwise, um, access denied. So real quick, we get our flag set to zero. So initially, no one's authorized. We get a buffer to hold the password that we're going to receive from our user. Put a little prompt out saying, you know, what's your password? We use fgets, uh, which is file get string. We're going to get it from a standard input. Put it into the buffer. Standard input against our keyboard. Uh, then we're going to compare it. If buff contains power, string compare should return zero. And the boolean check will, will say, will get us into the flag plus plus line of code, which will increase flag to one. If flag is greater than zero, which again, if we put power in, it will be, it'll be authorized. If we put anything other than power, it'll be access denied. Let's try it out. I'm going to write it out. So we wrote login.c. GCC is uh, the GNU-C compiler. You can use minus O switch to output to whatever uh, file name you want. We'll just call it login. So compile any kind of errors, that's good. We'll run login. Let's try uh, love as the password. Should be not. Should be access denied, and it is. All right, power. This should be auth granted authorization. It doesn't, so I made a mistake. <coughs> Let me see. I see the mistake. So let's see. Okay. Uh, one thing to know with fgets is fgets will read in new line characters. So whenever I hit enter, when I put my when I write the password and hit enter, it actually puts a new line character, which is this. This backslash n. Now obviously our power doesn't have that. So that's why it's not matching. Because we're basically comparing this to this. So what we're going to do is strip the new line. Uh, so we're going to go something like uh, if buff string length buff minus one equals new line buff string length buff minus one equals zero. <coughs> so all we're doing is basically checking um, the last character. Now you gotta remember C is actually z uh, a zero based index. So just a heads up. If we enter the word uh, power buff zero is P not one. So uh, let me see real quick. Uh, one O two W three equals E four equals R five equals new line. That's how memory's gonna look. Whenever we read in power, it'll have that new line. So we do a string length, it's gonna actually turn six characters. Zero to five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, that's a total of six. So we gotta go six minus one to get to the fifth character, which is our new line. And overwrite that with a zero terminating character. So that's what we're doing there. Now that should work. It should actually compare properly. Let's try it again. Recompile it. Run it again. Password. Uh, power. Authorized. Let's make sure it's working correctly. Let's try love. Access denied. So now it's actually working properly. <coughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to use GDB. So now what you have to do is you have to pretend that we didn't actually write this program. So what you're, what you're faced with is, you know, maybe you're on your system, you're on someone else's system, and you're faced with this program, when you run it, and it says, you know, what's the password? And, you know, you don't know what the password is. You could brute force it, but if they use a good password, you're not going to know the brute force. In this case, obviously, the password user is terrible and it's easily brute forced. Um, but there's, new, there's an easier way to, to, to actually bypass this protection, uh, even without brute forcing it. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We're going to use GDB, which is the GNU... Um, Debugger. Uh, so we're going to go GDB login, which is our program. So again, we don't have access to the source code, all we have access to see is the binary. So we get inside GDB, we're going to set a break on fgets. Now, normally you're not going to know right away what function they're using to read input. 
Um, for an example, I mean, Windows, you know, it'll be something like get window text or get dialog item text, uh, you know, or any number of functions to, to read text. Uh, the way you get find those functions is there's a lot of tools out there that you can actually examine the file, the, the binary, find out what functions are exported, what functions it uses, and from there you can deduce which, what they're using to actually read uh, input. In this case, it's a little easy. We wrote the program, we know what we're using to actually retrieve input, so that's what we're going to set the breakpoint on, F gets. Now we'll run our program. Should break in our F gets, and it does. You see where it says password right there, so we got our prompt password. Then we hit F gets, and, it, and the debugger did its job, it broke in on F gets. We're going to step out of F gets, and it should then prompt me for the password, which it does. So I'm going to put the wrong password. I'm going to put uh, this is the wrong, this is, this is bad password. Breaks back in to main. So now we should be right after F gets. And just to see that, we'll do a disassemble RIP. So what that is, is it's going to disassemble the instructions at the register IP. IP is instruction pointer. So when I do that, you can see right here, this is where we're actually at, instruction wise. Load effective address, right here. If I do something called step I, which is step instruction, it steps to the very next instruction. So if I do disassemble again, you should see we're at the 63B, which we are. Now, if you look at this, you can see right away, um, which is called a string length, you know what that is, it gets the length of the string. So you can kind of deduce from that that the author is, whoever, whoever wrote this protection scheme, they're getting the length of what you just inputted to do some kind of calculation on it. Maybe there's some kind of minimum length, you know, maybe they're using it for something else, who knows. Uh, but even more interesting is down here you see the string compare call. Now in this case, you know what string compare does, it compares two strings. So I mean more than likely what the author is doing there is it's actually comparing what you inputted with the actual correct password. Now right after this, this call the string compare returns, it does a test EAX. What that does is testing EAX for negative value, um, jump if not equal. So it's a comparison, uh, basically a conditional jump. So essentially, if your password is uh, right, it'll jump incorrect. It'll jump to the uh, incorrect bad message. What we're actually going to do is just going to change it so it doesn't even get that task. Doesn't even jump. We're going to basically remove this jump so it just continues the normal execution flow. We're going to test this out here real quick. We're going to do something like set. This uh, the address uh, where is it four zero zero six seven eight equals zero five. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting. Uh, you can kind of ignore this. Basically, it's just a way to, to get access to this address. So it's basically it's casting this address to an unsigned char star, and it's saying what and it's saying go to this address with a star here. Uh, it's a little if you're if you're new, um, don't worry about it too much. All this is basically saying is go to this address and write this value. So again, that, that, that address is right here. That's the jump. We want to get rid of that jump. 0x90 is actually the instruction code NOP. NOP, N-O-P, which basically means no operation. So it'll basically just, it, when, it, when, the, uh, when, the, when your program is running, it'll just run through those instructions and do nothing. Now, one thing to notice is this jump has two bytes. You can see here it goes from 678 to 67A. So that jump can, to actually have that jump in an assembly language, it's two bytes. So we're going to have to knop out 678 and 679. So let's do that. Okay, and then I'll do 679. So now let's disassemble it again. We should see them knopped. So now that jump isn't there. So now when it comes into this call, it'll do this test, but it doesn't matter. Because it's going to hit our knops, and it's going to keep running through the code. And now if we were right, um, we should get to the good call. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, to uh, act as if it's registered, act as if we have authorization no matter what. Remember we added we added in uh, this is a bad password so this sh it should say uh, access denied but because we knocked the actual check the actual conditional jump it, we're probably going to avoid that and we're going to say access granted we're going to get a good uh, execution flow so we'll do a continue now and we'll see what the program says so you can see here authorized so essentially what we did was we removed that conditional jump so that no matter what we entered in it didn't matter it wasn't going to it wasn't going to actually check it. 
So the execution rule doesn't actually divert to the bad message. So now, I mean, again, this program, all this is authorized, but had this been an actual real program, you get into the actual part of the program that you're not authorized to get into, no matter what you put in. You can put in any password I want, um, and it's still going to get in there. Let's just run through one more time really, really quickly. Uh, let me just quit. Uh, let's go. Real quickly, same thing, break on fgets. Going to run it. So again, you see here, it's probably for the password. We're breaking to fgets. We're going to step out of it. Now we can put our password in. Again, let's put in anything. Let's put in this. No, this doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Hit enter. We're back in main. We're going to disassemble. RIP. Okay. So again, we see all code again. We see here the address didn't change. Same address. So we're going to do a set. Uh, unsigned. Charge. Zero X. Four zero zero six seven eight. So again, this is our jump. Right there. That's what we're going to knock out. So again, two bytes. So six seven, So again, equals 90. So 90, again, is the hex value of a knob. It's a one byte instruction. Now, again, it's a two byte instruction, so we got to put two knobs in. You see, it goes from 678 to 678A. So there's 678, 679, then 67A. So you can also see by plus 114 to plus 116. The first knob. The second knob. Now let's just make sure they're there. You see our knobs now. Um, and the jump is gone. So now we'll do a continue. Continue the program running. And it's authorized. Now just to show you that it doesn't work the other way around, <coughs> let's do something else really quickly. Uh, GDB again. Break on fgets. Uh, run. There's our password prompt. Step. Now this time we won't put any kind of knobs. We won't actually hack the program. Put in the bad password. Now we're just to continue. And without putting the option, you'll see access denied. Now this is kind of run a little longer than I thought. Um, wasn't very good, I'm sure. I'm going to upload another uh, video soon, which is going to show you how to actually uh, write your own patch so that you can actually patch the login binary file on disk. Make the changes to those knobs so that when you run login, it'll always be hacked. Because if you run login now, you'll see access denied because we haven't actually changed it on this we only change it in the debugger so you still need the correct password here but what we're going to do next in our next video my next video is uh, I'll show you how to uh, apply to actually write your own patch it'll patch the file on your disk so that when you run it it'll be hacked or cracked or whatever whatever terminology you want to use so it'll always grant you access uh, so that's it for now um, I'll, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll upload the other video uh, soon enough. Thanks.